Let's talk, let's talk about Dave, David Pilates. Um, okay. Who is he? Where, where did this all come from? And what do the skeptics say? Um, because I, I, I'm going to be very really honest with you about this. I, I always look at what the skeptics say when I am, am researching something I don't know a lot about. But if we say a little bit about David. So like we said at the start of the show, he was a police officer. He was um, a detective. He um, worked in several different fields within uh, the police force. Um, he was actually dismissed from the police force in 1996 um, after he'd been charged with a misdemeanor. He was charged with um, falsely soliciting a charity um, and, and was dismissed. Uh, it's a little bit unclear, but it seems like later he actually appealed that and won and got his benefits back, which does make it sound like he might not have been actually guilty of that offence. Um, but as a police officer, if you're charged with any offence, you're dismissed. So in his retirement, forced retirement, he got a big interest in, in Bigfoot and started, wrote a couple of books, self-published them, had a bit of a, got a bit of notoriety in the area. And he's, he's in, he's, he was in a federal national park and a couple of rangers sort of spotted him, knew who he was. And apparently at the end of the day, came across to him and sort of said, uh, we know who you are. Um, I don't know if you're interested in this story that we see a lot of missing people and there seems to be, even though there's a lot of interest really early on, it then seems to get brushed under the carpet and it seems to happen a lot. And these rangers had worked in several national parks across the United States. So he started looking into it. Now, obviously the national park police were really helpful and never tried to block him at all. That's right. Isn't it? Uh for a list of uh, missing people in Yosemite Park, National Park, they wanted, I think it was $135,000. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then for the yeah. entire state, they wanted, I think it was $1.6 million. Yeah. They, that, that was their argument. Wow. That was the admin charges. Why? When, yeah, yeah, when you can go down to the local precinct. Okay, something like six, six, to, six to 12 months before it will be released after that as well. Yeah, it, it wasn't it wouldn't be a case of pay you 135 grand and here you go joe yeah. it would be a case yeah. of g give us the greenbacks and we'll get to you when we get time you know yeah, yeah. and he's still trying to get them lists he's, he's mm -hmm. spending and he never asked them well the they say they haven't got them and... they say they don't record missing people yeah which do you think bizarre, there's any possibility oh. that a that a, a national park a national organization a federal organization like that would not record if people went missing on their site I mean, I would say just from a liability point of view, an insurance point of view, yeah, you, um, you know, that, you'd write it down. I find you? it, um, I find it completely believable that a so-called well-run organisation is completely capable of negligence. Right. Yeah, same token, it, you, what you've got to remember is if they pass on them details to other people who they think are responsible yeah. for keeping those details and cataloguing those details, they would, it's the ability to pass the blame, but don't blame me. And I think they would jump at that, Kate, that they would jump at that chance, mm -hmm. pass it on to the police, pass it on to whichever other authority, don't bother us, we've got to look after Yogi Bear and make sure there's plenty of honey, bunny. Yeah, yeah. Now see, I don't I don't agree because a lot of these ranges, I mean you get some ranges that are like um tree surgeons this and their 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 job is to look after the, 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 the park like that way. But then other ranges are they are that police force, they are like um well, we would have railway police in this country or something like that. They are law yeah. enforcement. Mm -hmm. You know, um that, that is what they do. I mean, a big part of their job is making sure people have got the right passes and things like that. Mm -hmm. But they are police they are federal state police and they don't record when people go missing on a state park yeah That's i am a bailiff for a local water for, for for fisheries i'm a fisheries management officer as well as a bailiff and the land that we rent or the land that we have the fishing rights over the people that own it united utilities are not responsible for offering out the fishing licenses and not responsible for knowing who trespasses on the land we are so it doesn't always, responsibility doesn't always work like that. There is always somebody who's responsible for something else. They're responsible for providing people with water. They're responsible for making sure the purity is okay. And that is it. They've got a public liability in so much as, you know, access to the land. But even that, they pass that responsibility off onto us and we're supposed to deal with it. And um, I think, you know, if, if, if responsibility can be passed on by anybody in a position of authority, they will do it. So it's, yeah, it's not beyond the realms of comprehension. It was for me. their responsibility. 
That's my point, though, that it was if they are a police force. They are called the Federal the National Park Police. They are Somebody's, supposed to be yeah, law I, enforcement. I, I, it was I, I their understand jurisdiction. That, but... If they but don't have it, the, the police or FBI would, because the cases all inevitably end up going through the, the, the park police to, to the real yeah, yeah. police and onto the FBI. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, but I, I would say that they're, they're still reporting these crimes. So even if they're not keeping a list of um, like a file, an evidence file, mm. they should still have a list of people they've reported. Shouldn't they? They're, 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 they're still re- that, that's the key word there is that they're reporting, they're passing the information on to everybody else. Even with the police, the the the, the drug squad won't necessarily have all the information regarding murders and, and, and stuff like that because there'll be a homicide squad, there'll be different departments for this. And even though they like you said they are police, that type of thing will be passed on to missing persons or whatever other department, whether it's at a state level, a county level, or something like that. So I, I can understand why they've done it. I'm not saying that they shouldn't i agree with you why shouldn't they and why haven't they but i can understand why they might think to themselves well we don't need to do it it's not our responsibility we pass it on to x y r z department i mean i agree with you they should but i, I can yeah. understand why they haven't and they don't I mean, you know? in my job i work in social services and i don't necessarily keep a file for every customer i have but i do record it if i report something to somebody else i have to make a record mm-hmm. of it um i might not then have a record of what he's done about it I might not have a record of the, the resolution, but I have a record that I made a referral, that I reported something. That's well, what I'm saying. These guys are saying they haven't even got a record of them reporting it. That mm. doesn't make any sense to me at all. Um, the FBI in uh, 2019 said that they had 609,000 cases of missing persons in the United States um, that were opened and just, just over 607,000 cases closed. So that means there are 2,000 cases in America every year where somebody's reported missing and then never seen again. So these records do exist. There's just a debate on why the national parks don't don't seem to to have those records or to have that uh, have those lists. Well, I think, as it uh, says, someone someone one of our guests mentioned, it's not good for tourism to publicise the death statistics from people going missing. Essentially, in your uh, mm. in your parks, is it? It's not good for business. Mm. Yeah, that is a good point that Ellie <laughs> makes there as well, though, actually, that missing person cases aren't treated like a criminal offence, um, particularly America. It's it's not seen as a criminal activity because you have the right to disappear if you want to. Um, so that's why they don't even look for you for 24 hours unless there's some sort of evidence of foul play. Um, mm-hmm. So it, the, the, the missing person cases aren't treated the same way. A policeman doesn't want to think, I'm going to waste hours digging into this and trying to find somebody and just to find out he's he started off with his girlfriend for the weekend so i looked at what the skeptic said i found this skeptical inquirer 2017 kyle pollock um and the thing i found really interesting was even the skeptics are there going pollock yes um even the skeptics are there going the cases are genuine we know the cases are genuine um we can't find any major discrepancies in anything that um, david plaid says or claims um but they have the argument basically is that nothing to see here it's all fine um it's just normal cases yeah I, I, you know we yeah. keith bennett's body still hasn't been found the only evidence they had was that he disappeared <clears throat> and then myra hinley opening her mouth mm-hmm. that was it there was no evidence had been taken there was no sighting mm-hmm. his body hasn't been found he just disappeared it does happen it happens a lot it well, right now in America, the time, you know, they est- yeah, right now in America, they estimate there's about 30 serial killers that are active. Um, in yeah. the late 80s, the height of it was they're estimated anything up to 100 serial killers are active in the United States. Um, I just don't think it's it's impossible to assume that a great deal of the cases, <laughs> although we haven't, it, although there isn't physical evidence there, they've just been, especially given the age, especially given the age of a lot of the cases as well in the 50s and 60s, where there wasn't the same degree of um criminal forensics the, the, a lot of these people have been taken there's, there's been no sign left of them they've been killed they've been buried a long way away mm-hmm. and that's massively unfortunate and really traumatic for the families yeah but mm-hmm. you know and the, 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 i think it's a mix of reasons why people are going missing yeah i think so and um for me i read about david Pelletis. <laughs> and I, I, I do look at why he was dismissed from the police and 
it's not really here neither here nor there but it sounds like he was doing something he shouldn't have been doing um for money he then wrote books on bigfoot he then he then seems to have hit on something he's he's he seems to me to be very clever that he he very he's very, he's very careful not to sort of shout aliens even though he he implies supernatural reasons quite a lot he never actually says it because he knows he a large number of his people would dismiss him he's he's, he's sort of very clever in that way he talks a lot yeah. about being a detective even though some things have, have questioned his police career um that is maybe not quite as exciting as he's made out um people are always going to say crap though aren't they they're interesting people stories always say though. Crap, yeah I, but I, I even the skeptics say these stories are genuine they're, they're genuine yeah, I, I think you, you, you um, up if you if you you can respect somebody for the work they do, but it doesn't mean they're squeaky clean just because you like what they do. Mm. You know, I I don't feel the need to defend David Pilates just because of the work that he's doing. If he's been dodgy in the past, he's been dodgy. That's just the, that's just it. That's that's it. People change, people mm -hmm. can change, mm -hmm. people do change. Uh, yeah. Should he be judged upon what he's doing now? Absolutely, of course he should. However, you know, you know, when you when you're in the public eye, everything becomes public. Um, yeah. Does it detract from what he's doing now? No. Should why he's doing all the 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 the, the reasons why he's doing what he's doing now be called into question? Also, probably no. Is he doing it because his career was cut short? Yet he still feels that need for mystery and intrigue. Like he was a police yeah. officer. Yeah, you know, one of the things I, I did sort of question about him when I was listening to the interview with about him today was um, he talked about he's put information, Freedom of Information Act requests in. And he mm -hmm. made the point of saying, well, I'm a published author, so I wanted to waive the fees. Um, and they turned around and said, no, because your um, books aren't in enough libraries. Mm -hmm. So then so they said uh, it, the, the, on this interview, they argued, well, that's not a thing. You're a published author. So that's, that's it. That's the end of it. It's not quite true, though, because he was a self-published author. He wasn't actually published by any publisher. He he self-published those first two books. The missing 411 books now are massively popular. But it's, it's not. it wasn't quite true to say that he was a, a published author, or not in the traditional sense, anyway. So I thought that was he, he changed he, he changed history a little bit to suit you mean, his There point. you go, you see. There you go, you see. He have his books in the, you know, the books in the American Library or the the the, the, the British Library. They registered. They have ISBN Congress. numbers. Yeah, mm. Congress. There you go. Yeah. So it's like, are you really, fella? Are you really a published author? Because yeah. you know, I, I can I can write loads of things and say I've published them. I can print loads of them and them out on the street. And technically speaking, I'm an author and it's been published. So again, yeah. there's an element of deception there, just in those words alone. Yeah, it I does. Think deceptions does. maybe is, is maybe it, a little it, harsh, but it it seems to be he's changed. He, he changed the facts to make his point. I'm a harsh man, Jamie. So I'm a harsh be. man. Yeah, um, but and if he's a I don't think anybody's a saint, are they? No, exactly. God knows I'm not. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, if I'm going to say what I, what I personally believe before we, and then we can go around the tiles and you can tell me what you think. But I, I actually don't think there's a great deal in this. I, I honestly don't. I think far too many people now wander off into the wilderness unprepared. One of these cases I read about how um, he was a, he was, he was a photographer. And he, he, he was dropped off by his mate. And even his mate, as he was dropping him off, said, he's not prepared for this. And then he went missing and his bone, bones and bits were found months later, sort of thing. And um, even his mate was saying he, he wasn't prepared for that. Um, he, he didn't have the right equipment. He was you know, definitely going to die. Um, but that somehow got into the 411. Uh, to me, that sounds like it was it was just a bad situation. Others, other ones I've read. One was a, a guy was a hunter, and he was a famous hunter. He hunted in Africa and things, and he was um, at the side of a lake, and they found you know there with his bow and arrow, um, and he was hunting moose apparently, and he, he again was found, no sign of a struggle, and but he'd been they just found bits of bits of teeth, his his bow and arrow was still sat there perfectly. Think that's weird. That doesn't make any sense. How would a trained hunter get caught by a wild animal? And then you've got the other side of actually how many wild animal attacks are there in North America? It's almost none. It's, it's like five or six big cat 
um, human attacks and, and five to ten bear attacks a year. Mm. But accidents do happen. And people do go into these places and they do fall into ravines and they do thing and they think they're going to get rescued and they think their mobile phones will work and they don't because people, are, they just don't seem to recognize risk anymore. Um, so I, I think some of these cases are really interesting, but I think it's a bit like what Nick, Nick Pope says about aliens, that 95% of these cases are probably nonsense. 5% are, are interesting and worth looking at. And I think probably 95% of the 411 cases are nonsense, are, are just accidents murderers people go I don't, I don't think you've done enough research personally on that no. i wouldn't go well, quite that high in the numbers maybe if you yeah. hadn't already <laughs> done so so he's profiled all of these cases to trim out the 95 percent in the first place before they supposedly made it into the missing 411 isn't that the purpose of the profile Wasn't but even that, a lot that... of the cases we mentioned today could have easily had very boring mundane um, all right then reasons. what about your guy that was 84 years old that couldn't really walk anywhere that disappeared where did where fell, did in, a river. fell in a river and was washed away <laughs> I, I say that with its tongue in cheek a little bit but it, th there <coughs> could be very boring reasons what happened to that man you know they he could, could be dead somewhere and you know they're better off. I, I hate a lot of reasons because so, ah well that child was obviously picked up by an eagle and carried off what? <laughs> no, it wasn't. That's just the stupidest thing I've ever heard. But there are very boring, mundane reasons why people go missing, and people do die and then don't get found, particularly in the wilderness. You know, it's yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I definitely agree with, with that, those comments. Yeah, in the wilderness, people go unprepared. Yes, and a lot of deaths could, could can can be accounted for, and probably some have snuck into this this four one one. I agree that you probably could reasonably account for yeah. uh, through normal. <laughs> Yeah, not dismissing so, all of them. Like I said, not dismissing all. Like ninety five percent, which is a number I pull out top of me because that's what Nick Pope says about aliens. I'm not dismissing all of them, but I'm saying a lot of them don't seem anything to me. They they just seem like they're more much more likely to be a very boring thing. They seem strange, but a lot of stuff does. Um, they're talking about how sometimes there's no tracks found, but then they in the same breath they talk about there's strange weather conditions. So well, rain is really good at washing tracks away. They commented on there is they commented on that quite a lot of the time after these disappearances occur, they appear to freak weather conditions roll in and then destroy any chance of them tracking them. Although saying that, in a lot of these cases, the dogs don't seem to want to track anything anyway or can't find a scent to track. Mm. Almost like they've changed frequency and they're in a different dimension and there is nothing to track because they're they're no longer in this current dimension. They're in the same four one one case. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Well, a lot of the cases, they reckon the dog just sits down or refuses to move. That's strange. I don't know. I always, I always trust animals. Animals seem to know when a load of birds or a load of wildlife starts clearing out of an area. That's when you know a volcano is about to erupt, or, mm -hmm. or, or that you, even if you're in the middle of the forest in the middle of the night, yeah, and all the wildlife started running away from you, you'd start running in the same direction it was running, wouldn't you? Because you're assuming something's not good coming your way. So mm -hmm. if dogs won't follow a scent. That's they're it. telling you there's nothing there that like it, it, something just it stopped like there they didn't mm. didn't travel anywhere over land in any direction around otherwise the dog would be able to track it <laughs> yeah what do you think what do you think steve i've had a rant <clears throat> i think that that <sighs> it's not that you're wrong it's just that you're a little bit closed-minded, aren't you? <laughs> well, that, I, I try to be open minded, but you got to look at the it, evidence. It's like, I see. It's... not try. It's just be open-minded. Um, just think that anything is possible until proven not possible. Do you know what I mean? The facts are there, right in front of you. You know, it, it's like, oh, he was probably fell into a river or taken, but no, he wasn't because then cases have been dismissed. Do you know what I mean? So. The four one yeah. one cases are there for a reason. Do you know what I mean? It's it, it's not a, an eagle or it's not a flipping mountain lion or a kidnapper or anything like that. No, that's a load of BS. What is going on is something that we have no clue about. Do you know what I mean? It, it it's like Dave was saying before. You know, different frequencies, different dimensions, and and all that sort of stuff. Um, it it's it's happening. You know, and you have to be. I don't know, a little bit blinded to to not see that there is something surprisingly mm. odd going on. 
I don't, like I said, I'm open to the possibility that some some of these cases are odd. But in the same respect, with respect, if you're going to be open minded, you've got to be open to the possibility that this actually is just there but are there's no boring reasons for a lot of these. Yeah, that is a, a bit. I don't know. There are there are some. Uh, the more you look into it, and the more cases you go over, the more mysteries there are, and and the more weird things there are, and the, and the more patterns there are between. Not not mm -hmm. just the ones in North America, but they're starting to look elsewhere, aren't they? They're starting to look into Canada now as well. Come on, Steve. What do you think? We've got the final word. I think that it's some that we we just can't comprehend at the moment. There's something definitely going on. Um, mm. it's, there is a connection connection or, or something to do with water and and boulders, rocks. There is, um, you know, there's no footprints. There's no flipping uh scent or anything anything whatsoever you know um and just want to quickly add that there there was a case and it's in the film uh, i think it's the first film but it could be the second where one of the snr's uh, search and rescue um group uh are chatting and um she says that there was on um what was a missing 411 and or, or fell into that category and this little girl had been missing for for um a few days and there was a mist uh which, which shouldn't have been there for that time of year and, and time of day and stuff like that and the search and rescue people were walking towards this mist and out of the mist walked the little girl uh completely dazed um didn't have a clue where she was or anything like that but she was found alive and the dogs didn't have any scent. They couldn't smell her. They couldn't see her. Um, the whole area had been searched previously, and she just appeared, literally, out of the mist. Crazy, Dave. So, evidence of absence isn't ab absence of evidence, either way. Okay, and just because there isn't tracks of anything like that left that we haven't found doesn't necessarily prove that there isn't a prosaic explanation. I have to defend you and agree with a lot of what you've said, Jamie, actually. Um, but just because we don't understand it doesn't mean that it's anything other than the fact that we haven't... As human beings, we expect to think that we have all the answers and that we understand everything. That's what leads to mystery in the first place. I think a big chunk of, of, of them can be explained if only we, we can find the answers to them. And, you know, I think, like you said, being open-minded does work both ways. You know, you do have to be open-minded. Of course you do, yeah. Both sides, you, you to, to, to be all-encompassing yeah. and, and as a researcher. However, some of them, you know, they, they're... It's so difficult to explain the, the, these, as some, like you know, as, as the other guys have pointed to. There shouldn't be any reason why these people should just disappear completely in the way, in the manner that they have, and to mm -hmm. just cast it aside as being completely nothing. Um, I also think he is onto something. Uh, I'm not entirely <clears throat> sure what it is. I, I don't like the fact that he he will change the constraints of what he dictates as being what quantifies as a case i think it's to to gain or to garner more impetus behind it because there's more of them you know more notoriety, um, I suppose, yeah. To, yeah to sort of add validity to it by weight of numbers um and i would say the percentage is probably quite high that when we do know what's going on by default obviously we can explain them away um so I think, yeah, a lot of them are just down to very prosaic explanations, but there are enough of them. If you look, mm. if you search research enough to, they're going to have you scratching your head. I do, I do think he's onto something. So, sorry, Jamie, as he's becoming more famous, as the, there's more views on YouTube, as the books are selling more, the cases are growing. And is it because mm. it's happening more? Is it linear? And is it just because more and more people are disappearing? No, it's because he's changing the parameters of what he considers to be a case to validate it more. Is there another argument that, that he's finding more, finding more cases as the story becomes more popular? And I, I agree with you. He, he changes changing the, the confines. That, yeah. But he so. is going to find more cases as other people, because other people are now going to come forward, aren't they, and say, well, I've, had a strange I've heard about this. Yeah, this. Have you heard yeah. about this case? And that is going to happen as well. 
yeah, um, yeah, just to, course, just yeah. like just to play devil's advocate sort of thing. Yeah, of course, it's it's going to happen again as well, but it's not going to change the amount of people that disappear. You know, the, the people that disappear are going to disappear anyway, aren't they? Them numbers aren't going to change. Just the knowledge of that people that have changed, and you're going to see more of them come into the 411 case files as mm. he changes the remit of what makes a 411 case. That that doesn't change. That mm. is just a hard fact, whether people want to say it or not. <laughs> and coming away from YouTube doesn't prove his intent. Um, no. You know, uh, let, let's see. Let's see him on documentaries on TV soon. If his intent is to genuinely help people, then all power to him, and he deserves a massive pat on the back. Mm. You know, but let's not just you know let's let's not lose sight, or he shouldn't lose sight of what it is that he's trying to do, which is what, as a researcher, what any of us should be doing. Really, not just being open minded, mm. but not lose focus on what we try to do by the topic we're trying to pursue. Mm. Yeah. He doesn't seem disingenuous, does he? When you when you when you hear him talking no, about no, things, no. he seems no. to have a genuine interest in what he's he's doing, um, yeah. and, 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 and and believes in it, um, and and, yeah. and that's why he think he's very careful to to not overstretch what he speculates is causing it, and just try and present mm. both the facts from the cases. He doesn't like seem to, like he's trying to mislead anyone, does he? I picked that no. case earlier no. this evening. How was it going? Um, because actually it was a missing persons case that was closed and was reopened following it being raised as, as a 411 case. I mean, I think that is that might not have been his intention, but that is actually a huge win. That that family potentially could, it hasn't happened yet, but yeah, I you think you, you've made a really good point, there, Jamie. <laughs> you know, the, 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 what we what we should come away with from this one um, is the fact that if anybody is being helped. Um, by the actions of David Pilates and the work that he's doing. If any family's um, torment is, is laid to rest or made any easier by the actions that he's undertaking, then it's a very noble cause. Yeah, and the, yeah. the more people that become aware of it, um, the better. Another casualty that can be added to the 411 list is this this panel's ability tonight to pronounce people's names has been atrocious. I, I, <laughs> well, I haven't. Have I mispronounced any that. names? I'm not having it. I still can't say Pilates. I, I'm saying you can't say like David's surname right, can you? It's David Pilates, isn't it? Pilates. 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 It's a bit like yoga. You, you're making me do it wrong now, I swear. <laughs> Pilates. <laughs> I can't say names. 